if software is eating the world, transforming every industry, finance to health, education is the next one that's going. And it makes no sense that students are hundreds of thousands of euros in debt in some cases because they're having to pay for conventional education when the knowledge is already out there. And so we're at an exciting time with ambitious startups trying to create online educational experiences that can reach not just thousands, but sometimes millions of people. And we have two people here who are working at making these online resources a possibility. And the first one is a, an online learning platform that has 35 million users. It's five years old. The entrepreneur is Austrian, but decided that it would be better to set up the business in Spain. So he moved to Madrid. And as the business grew, and is growing very fast at the moment, he moved to London, where he's been for most of the last year, scaling up. And I'd like to introduce our first speaker from Vusu. Please welcome Bernard Niesner. Well, thank you very much for having this opportunity to talking to you. After speaking so much about sleep, my job now is try to wake you up a little bit. So, actually, I believe probably all of us in this room have learned already a language in their lives. And if you remember it, it's a pretty boring process, to be honest. It's expensive, it's time-consuming, it's very inflexible. No one actually wants to learn a language. It's all about speaking the language already. But then again, surprisingly, there's a billion people out there who learn English at the moment. It's going to be two billion by the year 2020, and people spend massive amount of money in language acquisition. It's all fueled by mega trends like immigration, travel. So we from Busu.com, we are a social network for language learning. So we provide language courses in 12 different languages and combine the language learning experience with the direct interaction with native speakers. So you have the online community, and you can directly chat with the users via an integrated video chat application and peer-to-peer -peer text corrections. So I want you to meet Evelyn, one of our power users. She's from Austria, Vienna, as myself. She's not my mother, but she's a big fan of Buzu. And she has learned five languages over the last years with our platform. She actually has corrected more than 12,000 exercises of other users. She told me that actually she has to get up very early in the morning because otherwise the Germans will get up and correct her students. Um, we have one user in Australia. She is a, a retired teacher, and she has corrected more than 50,000 exercises of other users. Um, I once sent her an email thanking her for the participation on our platform, and she wrote me back uh, correcting my email. So she's very much... Uh, into this com uh, community. So we do it on the website, we do it on uh, mobile phones, we have it for iOS, we have it for Android. Um, we offer it also for kids, so if you have kids between four and seven, we have an iP uh, iPad application where you can learn English and Spanish. And we have now grown the website to approximately 35 million users from all over the world. At the moment, we're growing at around uh, 40,000 people a day. So that means that in two days, we're able to fill up a complete Olympic stadium uh, with our user growth. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the interesting part is that our users come from all over the world. And online education is a global topic. We have users from Brazil, from Russia, from China, from Colombia. Because in those markets, in emerging markets, it's not a hobby to learn a language. It's a route to success. The taxi driver in Rio de Janeiro, he knows perfectly, when he knows a little bit of English, and he doesn't need to speak Shakespeare English, just a little bit, he can earn more money with the Olympics, with the upcoming World Championship. It's a global topic. Of course, for this conference, we had a look at gender specifics with language learning. And the answer to the question whether women learn differently is yes. Interestingly, women do 64% more tests than men. They try to test themselves more. If they set the goal, they're 40% more likely to achieve it. It speaks very well for the women. And finally, and that's really interesting, they love the social features. They correct 30% more than men. And knowing how much my girlfriend likes to talk on the phone, they like a lot the video chat. They use it four times more than men, actually. So they interact a lot. 
So we believe online education is the future, and there are certain challenges, and it's not necessarily affordability. Our system is for free, or you pay like $5 per month. So it's affordable, I believe, for most of the people uh, in the world. It's not necessarily about accessibility, because now in emerging markets, you have strong mobile penetration, and more and more people have access to online education. But the biggest challenge, and this applies probably also to offline, is to keep people motivated. We have so many things to do, and it's very important to continuously learn and to do it in the evening and in the afternoon. So it's tough to keep motivated. So we have had some learnings about how we motivate our users. The first one is it's all about goal setting and quantification of success. So you're able to set a goal. You want to improve your Spanish, what does it mean? So where are you now? Where do you want to go? How do you cut this down, the progress on the different levels? And we can trigger uh, the progress over time and show it to you visually. So Jawbone is doing this very successfully. Uh, running apps like Runtastic are doing that. So we can learn from that for education. The second is the power of community. So that's actually a screenshot of uh, Francisca's Spanish exercise. Um, so she writes an exercise after a minute or two, she gets a correction from a native speaker. And that engages the users. We actually figured out that if people see that other people are making mistakes in the language, uh, they are the, in their native language, it encourages them. They lose the fear to speak and to practice in a foreign language. We have a complete gamified world of language learning. So we have a language garden. Uh, every language uh, you learn is represented by a tree. The more you learn, it grows. If you're lazy, the tree shrinks. Um, we have an internal system of buzu berries, which you collect alongside your, your progress. It's in the real world pretty useless berries, virtual berries, but people love them. We have users calling us up and asking us why we have stolen them five buzu berries overnight. You can spend them in a virtual shop where you get uh, gifts for your garden. And interestingly, again, women like shopping. So women spend 55% more of their buzu berries. And they actually buy the ladybug as opposed to the guys who buy the kites. So what's an agenda for education in general? And we see definitely mobile, mobile, mobile. We grow 50% more on mobile devices. As mentioned, in emerging markets, there's more and more access to smartphones. So we want to be flexible in our learning and want to do it on the train, in the bus, whenever we want at home. Blended learning, it's not only about online or mobile. It's not only about offline. It's the combination of both which makes the success. So we will see more and more tools in schools and universities where actually teachers have access to the progress of the student, and you can measure it, and you can, it's integrated in the offline session. And a big topic for us is adaptive learning. It's about knowing the complete learning history of each individual user, tracking exactly, in our case, what vocabulary the uh, person has studied, did he or she knew it or not, and to customize the learning experience. Because a book is always the same for everyone but an online platform is actually able to be a complete customized experience for each individual user. So there are exciting years ahead, but we're absolutely convinced that technology will help to disrupt education. Thank you very much. Our next speaker leads their digital activities and the partnerships and acquisitions Orange has taken a stake in Daily Motion, for instance. Um, but they're also doing some interesting initiatives now in education using the knowledge that a telco can have. So please welcome Stephanie Hospital. So, um, uh, thanks uh, to welcome me. I'm very honored to be here. Thanks, uh, Maria, Stephie, uh, Francisca. Uh, so why education is so important for a career? First of all, because this is one of the last remaining sector that has not yet been touched by the digitalization. So there's a lot to come. There's a lot of innovation on cloud, on mobile, on social. And this is where we think that we, we can have an impact going forward. It's also business, and there's a lot of growth. So the market of global e-education is a 4.4 trillion market. And, uh, 
what is really interesting is that the, the usages are changing and more and more people value the online education. A recent survey was made in uh, the US uh, across the uh, uh, 3,100 college uh, um, and teachers where the 77% of the respondents would say that they value more the online education now than the face-to-face -face education. So it's a big shift and people are using to do that. They, they're, using, they're ready to do that because the, all the technology are there. Because also it's an economic matter. Uh, you have more than $1.1 billion of debt in the US linked to students uh, reimbursing their loan to access to education. So what will matter for you tomorrow? Having a Harvard uh, um, diploma? or being able to get certified online since Turcusera and or other uh, online websites and get your certification on your LinkedIn profile. I mean, most of the people, and especially in the, the developed country, would certainly choose the access to online education. And more than that, I mean, um, this uh, sector that was before fueled by uh, the, um, I would say, the, the public is not able now to be um, on the range uh, and the cause of that. So more and more it's something that becomes to the private sectors. And we do think that there's a lot to do because um, it's also a societal topic. I mean, uh, you have more than uh, 680 million um, students or kids to access school in developed countries. Among them, only 10% would go to a secondary school. So there's a massive societal impact for uh, all of us to be able to enable uh, that access to school thanks to mobile, thanks to digital uh, capabilities for the, the, um, the developed countries. And this is where tomorrow we will have the growth. This is where tomorrow we will have the, the global workforce. Um, so out of this, I mean, Orange is trying to do things. Why? Because we are, we are a carrier also, but because also we have a, a, a massive footprint in Africa. And uh, Africa, it's about uh, growth, it's about development. And um, we, we think that uh, with mobile, we will bring a lot to uh, Africa. And in the European country, we've done several experimentation. I mean, together always with the, the French government and uh, the um, uh, university on how to bring digital, how to boost the, or to accelerate the uh, equipment in the school, in the university, how to give access to people to English. So we launched a site uh, with the, um, uh, the Ministry of Education English by yourself, but we're also working on the several massive online players um, uh, project. A massive online, uh, not players, but uh, uh, students, uh, mock um, uh, field. And in Africa, so with the Orange Foundation, we really want to sustain the access to education to women. So to every kid, but also women. So last year, we have funded more than 40 projects, giving access to uh, 66,000 uh, kids to school. And among them, a lot of um, uh, women, a lot of uh, young students. Um, we do that also in Europe, and uh, in Europe, this is a different uh, approach. We want to make sure that uh, every single woman is able to go to the digital uh, uh, activity, is able to take some engineering uh, schools. So there, we want to have a role model. We work with the, the engineer school to foster the access and to give uh, the willingness for women to go to school. Last but not least, we think that uh, um, education is really a, a societal topic. So I've got a chance to be born in France, but if I, uh, I recap the story of my mother, my mother did not have access to school. She has to leave school at 12 years old. It seems very awkward now to think about that, but my mother always told me that all what I can give to you is access to education, and this, this is the most valuable topic. And um, I just want to finish on Malala Yousafzai's uh, last talk at the ONU. So this is a young student uh, from Pakistan that uh, has been, uh, is fighting to live and to give access to all the women uh, in the developed country to school. So should be coming. Video. Video, video. Video. <laughs> on Dailymotion. 
It's coming. So I'm not going to sing. <laughs> so it is? Yes, technology is there. <laughs> Still me? <laughs> So I encourage all of you to go to the Dailymotion website and to have a look to the Malala video. So, no, another try? We're going to do it or we're going to... We try? We try again? We have not many seconds, so... Excellent. So listen, Steffi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Steffi. So... I just want to whiz through some of the massive opportunities here because as well as giving access to millions of people some new content, we'll, we'll, we'll do it as a, as a sign-off, as a happy sign-off. So as well as giving access to millions of people of great new content that they weren't otherwise able to access, we also have access to a large amount of data. And if you can measure you can improve. So what do you think the benefits are, Bernard, of using these educational online tools to help individuals improve their progress? With regards to the data, you mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the biggest opportunity, I believe, for online or mobile platforms, because by now, the measurement of progress in education had been quite limited. I mean, you could see it maybe in the school that you pass on a test or not, but in between, it's like a black box. And we are able to track complete user history. We know exactly what our users are doing. We could identify whether there is an issue about uh, text comprehension or there's more a problem with uh, speaking skills. So by knowing this data and able to use that, our vision is to make basically, in our field, language education simply more efficient. But in the conventional classroom, the data is the teacher noticing this student or marking this homework. You don't get very much of a feedback loop. Beyond language learning, do you see this as potentially transforming how larger numbers of people benefit? Maybe using artificial intelligence that's using algorithms to measure performance, to give personalized feedback? Yeah, I think it's already the case. If you, um, Stanford is, uh, is changing the way it's, um, uh, on some program, it's, uh, it's uh, do the selection of its students just by using the test. And they have remarked that some of the students, I mean, selected online, were much more, um, having much more better results than the, the normal students who go on the certification or the graduation, the classical uh, courses. So it means that, especially that for secondary school, um, the, uh, the way, I mean, we, we built on the business model of the university, the business model of the engineering school, the business school is going to be changed. Because then what is more important is uh, the long-term uh, training and access is no more, I mean, doing, um, uh, being able to reach access to the uh, entry to the university, it's after. So th there's a massive change in the way we'll, uh, we'll uh, select, select people, select students, and give access to the best uh, courses. So one of the ways that Busu is working is you don't just learn from your coursework and you have your own courses, I think 150, but you also learn from each other. Yeah. What do you see as the potential of peer-to-peer -peer learning and what do you see as some of the pitfalls? I mean, we see it as a key driver of, of motivation, actually, and it can be simply that you're competing against your Facebook friends, for example, in your language skills, or with specific to, to languages, that you're able to practice, actually, your, your skills with another native speaker. So the power of community is, is pretty strong on all different subjects. To be able to interchange yourself with your own peer, peer group, but also learn from others who know something uh, you're not able to, uh, which you're not knowing, is something very powerful. Also the fact of teaching. I mean, as seen on our platform, our users love to teach their own uh, native language. Some of them only do that. We have users who only correct others and teach their, uh, teach their own uh, native language. So I believe there is massive potential of people being online, being connected, and share their knowledge with others. So if we're talking about not just taking on school-level education establishments, but taking on the universities as well. 
employers are still looking for a conventional certificate. They're still looking for a branded university. They will value Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge more than an online course. How long is it going to take? And is it possible that they change their minds? As for me, I do think that it's already changing. And that uh, you have already, I mean, um, uh, certificates that are uh, giving you access to uh, the diploma. And what the value of uh, Harvard tomorrow, of HEC or uh, Polytechnic will be more on the network of people and the connection between the students, the connection that you have than being, uh, having the diploma. And as, as long as we, uh, we, we work, we will have to go for long-term uh, learning, long-life learning, and being every time, I mean, trying to uh, get new uh, um, skills by learning and getting the certificate. So I think it's, it's a matter of a very um, short time to have uh, this transformation. On top of that, it's so expensive to go to the, the big uh, school that why for? I think we really have to differentiate between developed countries and emerging markets, because uh, for developed countries, of course, the one who could potentially go to Harvard might always prefer to go there and uh, might not want to do the online course. But then again, suddenly, with online courses, you give access to this fantastic material to people who live in complete remote areas. And just by the fact that they have internet access, they suddenly can get access to the best teachers around the world and consume something and improve their own lives. And that's changing. So I can see, Bernard, for Busu, there's potentially high revenue if you've got this viral growth and you can charge a premium subscription. But I'm wondering, for Orange, is there a real business motivation or is this to show that you're caring? What's in it for Orange to be in this market? Both sides. I mean, first of all, there's a business uh, motivation because it's a way of uh, getting access to the university, selling mobile phones, tablets. In Africa, where Orange has a large presence, I mean, obviously, I mean, uh, um, education is one of the primary focus, as it's also a way of uh, spreading out the development of smartphone and, uh, and uh, access to, uh, to uh, services. But uh, we do think also that it's a societal, societal uh, point of view, as, um, and this is why it's one of the topic <coughs> of our foundation. I mean, because we truly believe that uh, as big corporation, we need to be able to give access to people to education, give access to freedom, because education is freedom. So you mentioned, Bernard, that mobile is where the growth is. And mobile devices are coming right down. So the Akash tablet is being developed for the Indian market by this Canadian company, DataWind. It's offering it for $40 and the Indian government subsidizing it 50%. The Raspberry Pi as a low-cost computer coming out of Cambridge is about 20, 25 euros now. Do you see every child at some stage soon, no matter what their economic background, getting access to a low-cost mobile computing device? I hopefully see that, yes, definitely. I mean, it's already happening. I mean, in, in emerging markets, you have strong uh, mobile penetration. I mean, in Brazil, there are more mobile phones than inhabitants of the country. And this is driving massively also the growth of the economy. In Africa, uh, mobile payment is huge. People don't carry money anymore, but they have uh, topped up their mobile phones. So this will provide socioeconomic changes in uh, emerging markets and will give them, I think, a complete opportunity for, for growth. So just want to leave with one last question, which is for anybody here who wants to educate people on these new platforms, wants to take their knowledge base, maybe what their company is already doing, and reach potentially millions or tens of millions of new people, what advice would you give them, both of you? To corporates. If people here want to join this revolution, take content out there and reach millions of people? It's as simple as signing up to the providers out there. I mean, there are several providers uh, which provide online education. And join them and, and try it out for yourself and see whether it works. Stephanie, what do you see as the opportunity? Well, let's dare make it. I mean, it's, uh, the, the opportunity is, is already there. We are more than 4,000 4, uh, companies in Europe who are working on e-learning. 
So I'm, I'm sure that uh, there will be more uh, going forward. And for all of you, I mean, if you have an idea, I mean, you can become your own teacher and begin to teach online what you like to do to other people. So it's sharing. It's about sharing also. And then, now we're going live to the United Nations in New York for a special guest, Malala. On the 9th of October, 2012, the Taliban shot me on the left side of my forehead. They shot my friends too. They thought that the bullet would silence us. But they failed. The terrorists thought that they would change my aims and stop my ambitions. But nothing changed in my life except this. Weakness. Fear and hopelessness died. Strength, power, and courage was born. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. Education is the only solution. Education first. Thank you. Thank you, Malala. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you.